صحيح So you're probably thinking, why have we changed locations again? I know our YouTube channel doesn't seem very consistent, but there is a perfectly good reason on why I have hijacked my parents' kitchen, basically. And it is because of this machine here. It is the Kenwood KVC 7300S, also known as the Chef Titanium, which is a really hefty, hulky mixer. Now, the actual machine itself is made from very, very solid metal. I think it's actually aluminium that it's made of, but it is very, very well built, like a small tank, pretty much, of the kitchen. It is covered in these stainless steel, brushed stainless steel kind of highlights at the back, the bowl on the top, and the button here as well, which is touch sensitive to turn the light on and off so you can see what is actually going on inside the bowl when you are mixing. Now, it is all operated by this one dial here, on and off, which you can see has this illuminated ring around the outside of it that you can see turning on and off, so you know when it's on going on and off. And then everything else is controlled by twisting the dial. to increase the speed of the actual mixer. Now you do have a couple of areas which you can have added extras, and that is on top this, this kind of like, I don't know, safety cap, is so you can attach a blender to the top, and Ken would actually sell the blender separately, which you can then turn this into a blender as well. And then if we go onto the inside, all the tools can come apart. So this one here is a, a, a whisk essentially that's all that, that is you've also got this one as well which is a bread hook so that can twist and then sort of flip the dough over um, when you're making bread and the third one which has been designed by Kenwood is called their K-Mix tool which because of that K it helps when mixing things like cake batter or cookies that kind of thing so on each tool you can see that it's got these two notches here and they are designed to go inside so on the bottom here you've got two grooves cut out of it and you have to guide those notches into the grooves and then twist. And then that locks everything into place on here. So that's not moving anywhere. And once that's in, you can put the lid down and that's ready to mix. And then you can turn it on and start mixing your batter. Now, one thing is this removable piece of plastic, which acts like a kind of lid to the bowl once it's attached to the machine. Now, the nice thing about this is it has this lid which you can lift up and down and then pour various ingredients into the bowl while it's actually mixing. So I made a Victoria sponge not too long ago to give this machine a try and it said in the recipe instructions that I had to spoon ever so slightly flour and eggs while it was mixing, which made this pretty useful. And then you've got this plastic guard here to stop things from overflowing while you've got it on a more powerful mix. That's pretty much the machine in a nutshell. There's not really a huge amount to it. These tools are available from the Kenwood website, which are very, very expensive, but there are loads of tools on there, over 20, I think, at the moment, which you can get your hands on, and then um, you can create various recipes. And then there are also a number of recipes on there as well, so um, you can take advantage of the tools, all the tools that you've got here, and you can also take advantage of some of the other tools that Ken would sell. So I thought in true Technovo fashion, we tried the blender last time from Philips from their advanced collection, and we made a smoothie, and we made a bit of a pig's ear of that. So I thought today we'd do a bit of baking and make some cookies, mixing the batter with the Kenwood Chef Titanium. So now we've got the bowl off, I will say we're gonna start cooking. Bear with me, if you watched our advanced collection blender video, then you know that we're not the best cooks, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. So these are make your own beer cookies, and I don't know how they're gonna taste, but they look pretty cool. And there's actually a present that was bought for me over the Christmas period, so uh, I think we're gonna make this. It's pretty simple. You've got your cooking instructions in this little booklet here. So first is to preheat the oven, which I'm not gonna do at the moment. And then the second step is take the bag and tip it into the bowl. So, take this bag, rip it open, and start pouring. That didn't rip very well. Oh, a bit of plastic's falling in. 
As soon as that's gone, there it is. Get that out. <laughs> we don't want plastic in our cookies, in our beer cookies. Right, so that is the, oh, it's very powdery. Right. So I'm actually quite enjoying this cooking with Technoivo, it's quite fun. <laughs> reviewing, reviewing cooking, um, cooking products. And then you actually get to have a bit of fun as well. So it says mix with a spoon lightly first. There are chocolate chips. I'm not sure if you can see on the inside of here. There are chocolate chips that you want to mix around that kind of powdery cook, cookie mix. On the inside of the bowl as well, I'm not sure if you can see, it's got on one side liters, so you can measure liquid in here as well. And it's also got fluid ounces and cups on the other side as well. So you know how much um, ingredients, I suppose, are actually putting into the bowl. So now that is done, we need 40 grams of butter and stir it into the mix. So we've got our butter here, which do I need to melt it? I suppose I better melt it. <laughs> I don't want to get it wrong. I've actually pre-cut the butter to 40 grams, but looking at what happened during the blender video, I don't want to get this wrong because I want to taste some cookies. So uh, I'm just going to go and melt the butter and then we're going to crack back on with cooking these uh, beer cookies. Okay, so we've melted our 40 grams of butter, which was in this bowl here. And I'm just going to pour that now into my cookie mixture, making sure it all gets out because I don't want to waste any. Mix, mix, mix. There we go. So that's that done. And now we need some Add 50 milliliters of your chosen beer. So I need my bottle opener. And I was giving this Budweiser. What do you want? My cat's here. <laughs> I'm cooking. You want some beer? So I've got this Budweiser beer. Which is very foamy. That's quite busy actually. Uh, and I've got this old measuring jug. That is really not much beer. A hundred, two, three, yeah, so half that's gotta be 50. In you go. And now it's time, let's put that in there. Uh, done the beer. Take heaped teaspoons of the mixture and space them apart. Oh, and mix together thoroughly. So I know that we're only baking cookies and this is the only part that we're actually having to mix together, but if you go onto Kenwood's website, I will leave a link in the description. There are an abundance of recipes on there that take advantage of the actual mixer unit itself. And you can go through those and they give you step-by-step -step guides on how to bake and what to mix and what attachments to use as well, which is pretty cool. But today we're using the K-mixers. We're mixing some of the, the cake batter the same with the bowl as well, you've got to match up these grooves on the bottom. So if we get our mixing bowl and put it on there, that is now locked into place. Close everything down and then it makes a physical click. And then you turn this to start mixing everything together. And if you look on the actual inside of this mixture, That's mixing up, that's mixing up quite nicely and I know this machine is very very loud but it's not as loud as that blender we had the other day, that was very very loud. They give that a little bit more of a mix. This whole table is moving back and forth, it's actually quite funny. That seems pretty mixed together, so yeah, we well, just take everything apart. The only thing that's probably going to have a bit of slop on it. And that just twists to unlock again. Let's give that a bash. Now we do need a spoon just to scoop off any remnants of sort of mixture we don't want to lose. 
So there you go. One cookie mix all mixed up inside there, which has actually come out relatively well if you if I don't mind saying. It mixes up with such consistency. When I tried making I think it was just it was just like a Victoria sponge cake. When I tried making that before, it actually came out really well. And it came out with really smooth batter and everything was very consistently mixed together much much better than if you were doing it by hand or with maybe like a hand whisk or something this was actually really good so now what we're gonna have to do if we get the machine this is the rear of the machine by the way we don't need these because the whisking tool might actually help the whisking tool might actually help with mixing cakes, but Kenwood suggested using the K-Mix one, so I used the K-Mix one. We want to line up our tray with some non-stick paper. Spoon it out onto the paper. Flatten with the spoon. Oh, it's very sticky. This mixture. <laughs> Look at this! Flatten with the back of the spoon, but the back of the spoon just sticks to the... I think I'm actually only going to do six. And I think it's quite cool that these are odd shaped cookies as well. Like one of them hasn't come out very well. That looks a bit rubbish. Oh, I don't want the cookies going together either. Unless it's meant to be sticky, but I doubt it. Because it's just going to end up sticking to this paper. But I suppose the, the paper, if the paper is like an anti-stick thing. Non-sticking tray liner. Well, hopefully they'll still taste good. But I very much doubt they'll taste good. Because I'm not a chef. And if I was a chef, I wouldn't be making tech videos. Well, actually, to be honest with you, if I was a chef, I probably would be making tech videos. But I would concentrate purely on cooking tech. It is all just... Fun and games with cooking. Cooking is one big experiment. I think that's all the batter that we're going to be able to get. This mixer is so good that it's just gonna cause problems with this mixer mix, this cookie mix because it was meant to be mixed by my hand. Oh, see, look at this, it's just pulled off a chunk. Blend them together. I don't want them to stick together. My hands are disgusting, but good job. No one else is gonna eat these cookies. And I think that's it. So what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna get these into the oven and then bake them and see what kind of result I get. They mixed well, I can't really fault that. The whole cookie mix and the butter and the beer, they're all just mixed together in one and it was really good and it's come out looking good but I don't know how well these are gonna bake so let's get them in the oven and find out. There you go, there's one whole plate. Not the best looking cookies in the world but they look pretty all right, I think. Uh, one whole plate of beer cookies made by the Kenwood KVC 7300S. So there are other tools that you can buy as well through the Kenwood website, but they are very expensive. So you better make sure that you are actually going to be using the tool that you buy because it, otherwise it would just be a complete waste of money. Now my feelings on the Kenwood mixer is because of its large price tag to begin with, it's really only going to be advantageous if you're going to be using it pretty much on a daily basis. If you are a chef or you are a budding cooking enthusiast, then yes, this is the piece of equipment that you really need because it just does so much and it can replace other items in your kitchen as well, as I say, with all the different tools that you can get. The biggest problem I think is its size, but it doesn't look too bad anyway. It looks very, very nice and it looks very modern. So if you are going to be having it on a kitchen worktop anyway, it does look good enough to live there full time. As I say, it's extremely practical. Look at my cookies. I've got nice cookies to tuck into. So I think I better give these a try. They are very crumbly, unfortunately. The actual dough 
expanded a hell of a lot. It flattened a lot and expanded a lot. It basically just looked like one big piece of dough on, um, on, on the baking tray when I pulled it out of the oven, but... Hmm, they actually taste pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with uh, my cooking skills. A lot better than the smoothie we did last time. So thank you very much for watching our video of the Kenwood KVC 7300S or Chef Titanium as it's also known as. If you enjoyed this video then do click that thumbs up button. Please do subscribe to keep up with all of our latest tech and gaming videos and also leave a comment below letting us know what you think of the Chef Titanium. Whether you would invest in one for your kitchen or whether you prefer having standalone products dotted around the room. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in our next review.